Preview. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and um, I'm really thrilled about all the people uh, who, who come to this channel from outside the U.S. And there's a lot. Uh, we've got a pretty large audience down in Australia, a big audience in Japan, big audience in uh, in Europe. I would love it if uh, if more of the people from Japan would post in the comments. I, I would, that would that would that would rock. But anyway, it's kind of not uh, culturally. There, there's not a lot of, of cross posting. Um, in what's typically seen as it, it, it's interesting japan views youtube as a as very much a western product and uh and and so i know that uh my group online gets a lot of activity but they don't cross over quite a bit uh, but i but i love line I, I wish i mean line is is infinitely more healthy than <laughs> twitter and facebook um i don't know uh, anyway some of you are going the, the what now Go go download Line and check it out. L I N E. It's a it's a pretty damn good system, I think. Anyway, uh, this mail is coming from Europe, and it says, uh, "Hey, Mr. Birch, I'm from Europe, not the UK, as most of the English language comics I t buy tend to be imports. Um, because couriers aren't always the most diligent of people, I prefer to buy hardcovers. Yeah, that's a wise move. Uh, anyway, I've had the misfortune of a few getting uh, arriving damaged. Store I usually buy from giving me some store credit, and I don't complain that much because that's why I buy hardcovers to begin with." so the pages don't get damaged, only the covers. Over the past few years, I've nonetheless noticed something interesting. Titan Comics, a subsidiary of Titan Publishing, on the UK's largest comic book publishers, isn't actually printing their own stuff. They outsource printing to China. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this to badmouth China or yell about the dreaded C word, the virus one, not the country name one. There's another C word in there I thought you were, you were going with, but uh, yeah. anyway. I find it interesting that as large as a publish house as Titan is can't print in-house. Maybe it's only comics they export that are printed in China, but I've not seen other American or UK-based publishers printing hardcovers in China. My question is as follows. Am I wrong to find it absurd that a British publisher would print comics all the way in China, then have them shipped to the UK, and then distribute globally? As a follow-up, are U.S.-based publishers doing the same? Yes. Has comic book printing really become that much of an expense that shipping halfway around the globe is cheaper than local printing? That's a good question. So um, there's definitely print houses in the U.S. And there's print houses in the U.K., for that matter. There's definitely printers there. And they uh, there's a few reasons why publishers in the U.S., because there are definitely some who, who send stuff out to China. Some of it is cost, and some of it is availability, capacity, and some of it is, um, is, is, is just the amount. So a lot of U.S.-based publishers, and, and now I'm speaking generally, and for all of you who are doing crowdfunding books and, and other things, you, you may be quick to point out bullshit to what I'm about to say, but a lot of U.S.-based printers have moved to uh, basically making more of their money off shorter runs. So if it's going to be a, a large run, if it's going to be a huge you know, amount of printings or a lot of, uh, a lot of work, um, it typically has become, in their minds, more expensive for them, more trouble than it's worth, just more logistics. And so they're finding more value, more revenue in quicker, shorter runs. And so they're, in the U.S. anyway, they're, they're subtly kind of uh, deprioritizing that part of their business. And what happens is then uh, it, it gets clogged up, basically. the You know, somebody comes in with a big run, and if you have a big run as well, you find yourself, you know, you're going to be a couple weeks back or, or whatever it happens. It just starts to, the system starts to become full. And so uh, it, they, you know, there's been a lot of publishers who have pivoted to China where the costs are in some cases better, in some cases the same, but the belief is that it can get turned around faster as a, as a result. Uh, the prices in China are significantly less. The What you get back tends to be a bit of a moving target, and that's probably a, you know, a, a, a loaded statement. Um, you know, I, I think that you know, China is a complicated topic, just bluntly, because it's there's people who absolutely refuse to buy anything that comes from China. There's people who refuse to send their business there, and that's fine. It's their choice, and there's no issues with it. And uh, and for that matter, Jim and I Jump we published in the U.S. largely because we didn't want to deal with 
supply chain or if it was going to, you know, just dealing with overseas, if there was a problem, having to go back to them and yell at them. I mean, just all of the logistical pains of dealing with China. If you're a smaller house, uh, there's, there, you just, you don't want you, there's no reason to do it. But if you're a big house like Titan is, for example, going to China starts to make a lot of sense. You do have the QA and the people who can you know, spot check and verify that the material coming back is, is you know, being done to spec, being done properly. You do not have the same weights or scheduling conflicts that you might have with a, a national or local pub, uh, printer. And, uh, and you probably save a little bit of money because China is cheaper. Um, I think as we've seen, at least in the U.S., over the last, I don't know, six months or so, the supply chain is getting screwed up again. I think a lot of companies are, you know, realizing and recognizing that, uh, you know, going to China and saving a few dollars has a you know, dark side as well. And that side is, you know, if the supply chain gets disrupted, suddenly the books are late, you lose your advantage, it becomes, uh, you start getting things in pieces. And, and when I say pieces, like partial orders, not literally in pieces, but that's, that's been a lot of what people have been experiencing. So now the questions are coming back up is, you know, why, wait a minute, in the U.S., how did we lose our, our ability to print, you know, mass quantities of books? When did that happen? And it's, it's comical a little bit because everybody willingly participated in, in how this happened. And now suddenly it's like, oh, my God, what, who did this? It's like all of you. That's who did, that's who did it. What do you, what do you expect? Um, it, you know, China is – I've been to China many times. Um, it's a beautiful country in some areas. I, I will admit um, going to see some labs in Shenzhen – and going to uh, oh god where where uh, Chongqing and Shanghai, uh, where you know I saw some of the some some packing plants, some some places where they're making things. In one case, they're making rugs. And what's funny is the uh, when you go over there and you you know I was going over there to give a a, a talk a speech, and the um, the the government basically will arrange tours for you to say you know that it's kind of. It's, it's propagandish. It's like, hey, let's uh, let, you know come and we want to show you beautiful China, and they'll show you these amazing things. But but the the what people are proud of always feels slightly off. So we go to this uh, factory where they're making rugs, and it's like, and here are the dormitories where the people sleep. You know, people will come to the factory, and they'll uh, you know they'll they'll stay here, and, <laughs> and look, you know, and then you know, we, it, it, I could go on and on. I, I probably shouldn't, but. There, there was just, as they're describing kind of how the work gets done and, you know, the, the things they do to cut costs, um, you know, I, my, uh, my brother-in-law used to live over there and, and do some work and it's like, we need to make these machines run faster, remove all the safety gear. And it's like, it's like it just, just things you hear like, holy, I, it, it, it's not great. I, I put it that way. So when, when you learn about this stuff, you, you don't feel good about it. <laughs> And um, I, I think that there's probably some, I, I don't know, some additional reckoning that will happen as companies uh, learn more about what's going on over there. It's funny because, uh, you know, we hear a lot in the U.S., and I know you do in the U.K. as well, about kind of standards of work and workers' rights and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, people get really hostile about, uh, you know, the, the factory that's uh, making somebody work two hours of overtime without pay. And uh, meanwhile, we'll support things out of China. And it's like, if you went over there and saw what was going on, like, <laughs> it's at a whole other level. And it, I, I, again, I don't know if, if this is true in the UK, but uh, certainly in the US, there's a certain out of sight, out of mind mentality that comes up. It's like, well, I can't see those people being mistreated. So not, not a problem for me. <laughs> and, uh, and so you, you, anyway, you've seen a lot of work uh, head over there. Um, and so my point is, I guess it's cheaper and this is why it's cheaper. Um, by the way, I mean, for, I still think China is a beautiful country. I think there's some wonderful people over there. I think that, that, uh, you know, I don't get caught up in all that national, uh, nationalistic stuff, but it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's cause and effect. Look, if, if, if you are, uh, if you're able to offer a, a product, uh, yes, or a service like printing and shipping, all the way from the UK to China and back again, and it's cheaper than doing it domestically. You know, it, why is it cheaper? I mean, like what that that you know, that, this stuff isn't just there's not just magical money trees over in China that drives the cost down. There's reasons why it's cheaper, and the reasons why it's cheaper typically is 
you know, labor cost is, is less. The infrastructure is, uh, is less. If, you know, the, the state government, uh, if there's a problem, pretty much locks it down. So you don't get, you know, reforms that happen for this. So, I mean, it's just, that's, that's what's going on. Um, but I, I think, as I mentioned, there's a couple things. It's cost, it's availability, it's all these pieces. And that's why people are going to China. And it, it's definitely happening in the U.S. It's happening in the U.K., not surprised. I think if you see big runs of any kind of comic or magazine right now, there's going to be a lot of pressure to go to China. And it's, it's uh, especially as comics becomes a tight margin business, um, it, you know, it's, it's, you're going to see it. You're going to see it happen. Now, in fairness, I don't know that you'll see it happen like, I, I don't I, I don't think uh, Shonen is going to or Shueisha is going to start printing stuff in China anytime soon, but uh, but but we'll see, right? I mean, anything can happen. Never underestimate uh, how people can put aside uh, their principles and hatred for uh, cost savings. It's uh, it's remarkable how that works. Uh, but anyway, I hope that answered your question. I, I again, yeah, the short answer is yes. That's that's exactly what's going on, and and that's that's why they do it. So, um, is it nuts? I, it, it is. I mean, I, I don't know. I could go down a whole other path with this for another 10 minutes, but, but I mean, I, I often sit here just kind of wondering like, all right, so we're worried about the environment, but we're shipping stuff over to China to save, you know, 50 cents and we're shutting down plants and things domestically because, you know, worker rights and pollution and other things, but we're moving it over to China and China has to get the goods here, here. And there. I mean, they have to get the, get the goods back once they're made. And uh, some of the practice over there are kind of dodgy and like, you know, they're not running s- solar powered, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I've talked to somebody once and they're like, well, you know, China has these, uh, you know, shipping freighters that, uh, that run on solar power and use up no, no, have no carbon footprints. Like what? No, that, that, that doesn't exist. What are you talking about? A- anyway, it's just all these pieces. I, you drive yourself crazy if you, tr- if you try and put them all together. It's like, what, what, what are we facing? I mean, the, the short answer is if it's not in our backyard and we can't see it, then we really don't worry about it. And, um, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's the way anyway. Um, hope I answered your question. That one went in some strange directions, I know. Thanks for listening.